We're now going to continue our discussion of Java parallel streams, focusing on some of the interesting aspects related to internals. And we'll begin our discussion by talking about partitioning in Java parallel streams. We've talked about this before, talked about how you can break things up into chunks. And we're going to talk a bit in a bit more detail about how that works with parallel streams. So you may recall from our discussions of sequential streams that there was this abstraction called a splitterator, which is, uh, I think it's called a portmanteau for splittable iterator. So splittable iterator, also known as a splitterator, is what's used to partition a Java parallel stream up into chunks. And we've shown earlier how you can use a splitterator to traverse the elements in some data source. So if you recall our earlier discussions where we had this famous Shakespeare quote, and we're going to go ahead and use our splitterator and the try advance method to walk through each element one at a time. That's one way to do things. We're now going to talk about how a parallel splitterator can be used to partition the elements in a source up into chunks. And of course, we'll also talk about why you would want to do that. Basically, the way this works is there's a try split method that has to be implemented for parallel splitterators. It does not have to be implemented for sequential splitterators, but for parallel splitterators, you need to have try split implemented. And this is something that's called internally by the Java streams framework when you do a parallel stream. That's not something you typically call, so it's done on your behalf. And this is a summary of what try split does. So what it wants to do is it wants to be able to take the input, and if the input isn't already small enough, if it's big enough, we'll talk about what big enough means in a second, if it's big enough to be split, then the splitterator will go ahead and split it into two chunks. And ideally, it'll try to split things evenly. So if you have, you know, 100 elements, it'll try to start by splitting them into, you know, 1 through 49 or 0 through 49 and 50 through 99 or whatever. And uh, we'll talk later about how if that can work and how different types of data sources have different properties with respect to being efficient or not. So it's trying to split things up into even sized chunks. And then it updates the object that try split is called on to cover the right hand side of the split. And then it returns a new splitterator that covers the left hand side of the split. So that's that's what splitterator is really trying to do. One of the cool things about the way splitterators are designed is there's no need to add any synchronization manually. It arranges to do the splitting in such a way where there'll never be race conditions or atomicity problems or visibility problems or ordering problems and so on. And nor do you have to do any joining yourself. That's all handled by the Java Streams framework. The base case for the way that TriSplit works, because TriSplit you could think of as basically being recursive, is if the input is less than or equal to some minimum size, then just return null. Don't, don't split it any further. When you look at the Java collections, and we'll take a look at some Java collection implementations of TriSplit shortly, what you'll see is that TriSplit typically takes things down to a size of one. So if you had an array list, for example, it'll split it up until each element that's left has one element in it. Now, that is just the way it does it. It doesn't have to do it that way. In fact, you could write your own splitterator for array list that took it down to size five or something like that. Whatever you think needs to be the, the unit of atomicity. And this will basically keep recursing until you get to the point where it's got something that's you know, going to be considered atomic, whatever that means. So as you can see here, try split will wrap up when the chunk is less than or equal to the minimum size. When it returns null, that's an indication to the streams framework that you've finished processing the elements. There might be one element left, there might be zero elements left, there could be five elements left, whatever the split decides in try split. At that point, the rest of the processing on whatever's left is done sequentially by calling try advance. So you split to the point where you have an atomic unit, whatever that might be, and then try advance is then called on that. Typically, there's one element by default, and it consumes it. And we'll talk about try advance a bit more as well. Here are some nice examples. We're going to take a look first at the splitterator implementation for array list. So there's a little bit more to it than this, but these are the two most important methods. And you can go take a look at the implementation of ArrayList Splitterator if you go to this link at the bottom of the page. All the source code for Java is available in open source form. This is the Java 8 version 
I wouldn't expect it would have changed much in later releases because it's pretty simple. So as you can see here, try split will split the array evenly each time until there's nothing left to split, until you, we've got you know, either zero or one elements left. And here's what it looks like. Whoops. So what it does is it goes ahead and it figures out what the end of this range is and what the current index is. And index is something that's stored as a, a local variable, or it's not a local variable, it's a field in the array list splitterator. And then it computes the midpoint. And the midpoint is just the low plus the high divided by two or right shifted by one. This is the old school way of dividing by two. Uh, modern Java compilers, of course, if you replace that with divide by two, it would know to do a right shift by one, et cetera. And then what it does is it checks to see if low is greater than or equal to mid. If, there, if low is greater than or equal to mid, we return null because we're done. There's only one element or zero elements left. Otherwise, check out what we do. We go ahead and we create a new array list splitterator with the list, the low index, and the uh, mid index, and then the high index because that doesn't change. And so basically what that's doing is updating index. So that's saying, make the right-hand side of this thing now, sorry, make, make this object, the object for which trisplit was called, make that index field cover the right-hand side and then create a new array list splitterator that will cover the left-hand side. That's the basic idea. Pretty simple algorithm. It's, it's kind of like binary search in a way if you think about it. So it splits it. Here's what try advance does. When try advance is called, and it should be called, there should only be you know, no more than one element at this point because we split it down to one. What it is going to go ahead and do is it's going to check to see if the index is less than the end. And if it is, it goes ahead and takes the next element and accepts it into the consumer action. And it returns true, saying, keep going. Now, in this case, the next time you call it, it will, uh, it will have turned into false because index would have been incremented by one. That's the, I don't show that here, but index gets incremented by one here. Otherwise, if we don't have anything left, we return false. So the key thing to note about array list is how efficient it is because it divides everything evenly and efficiently. It's constant time operation. It's just basically adding two numbers, dividing by two, and then splitting things up. In contrast, other collections don't split evenly and efficiently. And of course, the biggest offender there is linked list. And this is what linked list does. Now, there's obviously different ways you could implement linked list. One way you could implement linked list would be to go through till you found the midway point and then make the right hand be the, you know, the linked list from the midway point onwards and the left hand be from the beginning of the list up to the midway point up to but not including the midway point. That would be one way to do it. But then you'd have to search, you know, basically linear time to find the midpoint. That's the problem of the linked list. You have to find the midpoint each time. So obviously that has some downsides. So they don't do that in the Java implementation. Instead, they do this very complicated technique here where they split the linked list up into batches, which are objects, arrays, arrays of objects, and they go ahead and split them up into this array of objects, and then they go ahead and will create a new splitterator that works on that array. And so if you had a very large linked list, it would keep doing these batches in chunks. So it's obviously going to take a while to do that. It doesn't split anywhere nearly as evenly as the array list splitterator. It doesn't split anywhere nearly as efficiently as the array list splitterator, but it works, which is the most important thing. And here's what try advance does for a linked list. It basically does some magic knowing the implementation of the internals of linked list going to um, you know, next pointers and stuff like that, like p.next and p.item and so on and so forth. So it's just a bit more complicated, but on the other hand, it works, and that's what's important. We'll cover some implementation details of parallel splitterators in upcoming lessons. And we're also, for fun, going to take a look at the performance implications of doing different kinds of uh, splitterators and different kinds of data structures very shortly. We're actually to see which one performs better and how it differs as the size of the list gets larger. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of partitioning in a parallel stream. The most important thing to remember is you've got these splitterators and unlike sequential streams where only try advanced matters for parallel streams, 
try split matters too, because that's what's done for splitting things. And most of the time, you don't have to worry about this, it's done for you. But if you make your own custom collections, then you have to think about how to do the splitterator. And I will show you that in more detail shortly.